Okay, welcome back. How was the break? Did you get any time to relax or do something besides engineering? Or is engineering relaxing? It's like, this is what I, this is my life. Sorry? Materials, yeah. How was your Mine was good. I went down to like Philly area to go see friends from uh, Drexel when I was undergrad there. Um, this is the time. I, I, I mean, you could, you can build like lifetime lasting relationships because I've, I've been in touch with people from college and grad school for the last decade of all different, all different kinds of people. It's a good time to build networks in this college time. Are you ready to jump back in? Get to it. This week is a little loaded because I pushed because I had pushed off that quiz from before the break. So we have quiz three due tomorrow based on what we built in class before spring break. And there's a self assessment for your participation that's due by Friday. We could do that right now if you want. That's what we started off the class um, last section doing. And then the last thing to do this week is the project for the pendulum motion project. So last Friday, before the break, we were looking at a couple of different pendulums. We set two up in the classroom to look at how the length affects frequency and time period. And then we set one up in the stairwell to look at like how Bigger is better, like real super long pendulum. How long does it take to swing from side to side? Did you figure out how long it was, the pendulum? And like a 10 second, it was 10 seconds? I think that was right. 10 second time period. Anyway. Sorry? Yeah, like 10 points something. It was around like a 10 second time period. So question, the lingering question to like hang out with friends and talk about was how long is that pendulum? All right, participation self-assessment. We can get this done like right now if you want. This, so this grade is not factored into your final grade at all. I just want to know what you think. Like, do you feel like you have an A because you're actively, because you're here, you do all the videos, you do the readings, like everything's great. Or do you feel like, I don't know anyone in this class. I don't know where to get started. Please help. Because this grade is completely gone in, in five weeks when you submit your final grade, this grade is gone. So it's off the record. It's just for me to know, like, how are you doing? What's going on? Do you have friends in the class? If you do, that's great. If you don't, then usually what happens is like a third of the class has no one. Like it's like, if they're not talking to me, they don't talk to anyone. And that means most of the time they talk to no one. So at least what I can do is connect those people. Cause that's my like wallflower technique as an introvert is I look for all the people at the party that are staring at their feet and I introduce myself to those people because they're also nervous and anxious about being at a party with like 100 people. So I network with the wallflowers. And that's what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to help here. It's connect, connect people that have no connections. So again, I just wanna know like C through A roughly need help versus like, don't, I'm good. 
everything's fine. Take a couple of minutes. We can answer this right now. And if you have questions, I'm walking around. Let me know what you think, what your questions are. I didn't hear any questions on participation. Hopefully it's clear so far. Um, your final grade is self-assessed. Like I'm not, um, I, I have not fought anyone based on their own assessment of how they participate in the class. If you want to try to be the first, I don't know, maybe you could try, like be overly, I don't know. I, actually, that's not true. I have fought people. Some people have given themselves like a B minus, but they show up to every class and they ask questions and like, that's not a, that's not a B minus. So I give them an A anyway. So I have upgraded people, even if they, even if they feel like they weren't participating. So I have fought, I have fought people on it. Sorry. For participation. Yeah. And that is, let's look at our grades. It, it's one, one fifth of the grade is how, how you're kind of connecting to the course. Ideally, I want you to leave here with like one, you can draw free body diagrams. Two, you have like a network of people that you met and you all shared this awkward experience of going through my class. And you can talk about that for the next decade of like, remember that weird guy who was like obsessed with Python and he was crazy. Sometimes he made a point. And 
yeah, those are the big things. So trying to build these experiences. Okay, now we're into the project. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Today and the next two days, building this comparison between linear and nonlinear differential equation solutions. Why? Why would I even? Why would I want a nonlinear differential equation, or why would I want a linear one? What's What's the difference between the linear and here I called it lin linearized and numerical. So what's the difference between those? Just face value, what you're starting with. What's the difference? Yeah. It's an approximation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we have kind of the exact the exact like acceleration will be proportional to sine theta. If you think about like on a swing, um, whenever you swing way high up, you don't have a you don't have a huge acceleration, but it feels like yeah, anyway, you, you don't have, the acceleration is not always proportional to your angle on, on a swing or any kind of pendulum sort of device. But we make this approximation that it is, that the bigger the angle, the more acceleration you have. Kind of like a spring. The more you stretch a spring, the more the spring pulls it back to, to zero. So the bigger the angle, the faster it's going to swing back through zero and swing to the other side. Why would you want to make, if it's an approximation, like why do that? Why would you want to do that? Why would you approximate, if you have an exact differential equation, why would you approximate it in a different way, in a linear way? Yeah. It's easier. Yeah. Think so linear whenever things are linear like in that part 1, there's so many there's decades, probably 100 years worth of like math tools that that have solutions and ways to like deal with that. And if you want to add like a purport like a PID controller to it, linear differential equations, that's it's not easy. Like you still have to do math, but there are pre-made solutions for it. So linearized, linearized like kind of differential equations are all like easier to deal with than nonlinear stuff. Both of them introduce errors in different ways. So let's take a look at what's going on. Here I'm going to set up Initial angle is 60 degrees and it's not moved. So I release it from 60 degrees and let it swing. 60, negative 60. And it's kind of what I would expect. 60, negative 60, then 60, then negative 60, then 60. So two time periods. Then I create a numerical solution where I'm actually using like the sign of the angle instead of just the angle itself. It still goes 60 to negative 60, back up to 60, back to negative 60. So then I'll compare the two of them together. There's a difference. Blue and red are not the same lines. Red is the numerical. Blue is the linear solution. Take a minute and talk about what is the difference between, how do you describe or quantify, even better, is quantify the difference between these two lines. What's the difference? Um, 
we think? What are the differences? I mean, are you guys looking on quiz? Uh, or I would kind of mulch a little bit of that. <laughs> I'm never good at multitasking. Everything fails. What do you think? What's the difference? Red to blue. How would you describe that? I think it's just the same location, or like the same map. I think it's, is red just kind of more stretched out? It's like stretched. Yeah, stretched out just like quicker. Something quicker? Like a second or something. Yeah. They have the same map. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, it's signs of the same map. Two different maps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, Someone said, I heard frequencies. This was the thing that I heard kind of most all, at, at least some some kind of version of this is that the time period was the main difference between blue and red. Something like that, that the time period is different. What does that mean for frequency? Frequency is higher. Yeah. Oh, you want to add a cell? Um, so like in here, if you add a new cell, you can say change the cell type from code to markdown. And then that, that makes like just a... So time, so time period one is less than time period two. Frequency one is equal to, more than, or less than? More than, yeah. Greater than. Because this is one. Like that. 
Yeah, 1 over t1 versus 1 over t2. What about if, you, if I want to know the natural frequency, like omega, what is root g over that root g over l, cosine? Because both of these are like cosine kind of functions. So cosine of omega t. What was that? Omega versus f. Do you remember the factor that's different between there? Is it frequency times? Frequency? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one's good, like, especially if you're trying to compare like a math problem to an actual measurement, like we were doing before the break. We had actual pendulum swinging. I can't measure radians per second. I just can't do it. I mean, I'm trying to think. Maybe if you had a protractor that was measured in radians, you could try to do it. But even then, you're measuring radians and then taking snapshots. But I can measure cycles per second. And anytime you can make a measurement, if you can if you can do psych like frequencies instead of actual values, there's so much less error in trying to measure a frequency than there is in measuring like actual position speeds, velocities. It's just much easier to do. So that factor of two pi helps you actually convert your math work to like frequency work, cycles per second to radians per second. How big of a difference is there? Time period one, time period two. Um, not very much, but like not much. Time, time bigger, bigger. Oh, it gets bigger? <clears throat> yeah. So it's less than half a second, right? If that one's half, is it less than a quarter second? Like an eighth of a second? Something like that? Something like that, eighth of a second. Trying to. This is another thing that, um, not necessarily directly related to dynamics, although it's important, but for your career, for engineering career, people pay you to tell them what to do with numbers. So it's important that when you say, there's a difference between these two. You quantify what that difference is and tell people it doesn't matter or it does matter. You got you to gotta make that decision. You're the engineer. It's your choice as to whether an eighth of a second matters or it doesn't matter. All right, let's do some experimenting now. Instead of like pi over three, so like 60 degree angle, let's make it smaller. How small should we make it? Just, we could either make it smaller or bigger or leave it the same or like change the length, but, but here, I just want to take, instead of 60 degrees, let's do something less than 60. 30? 30 sounds good. So like pi over 6.
for linear solution, not, not much of a difference. The y scale changed. It's going 30 to negative 30. Nonlinear, it's hard to see, but there was a slight change. So let's plot it on top of the linear. What's different now? Is there a difference between blue and red? Yes. Yes? Smaller. Smaller difference. All right. So smaller angle, angle made smaller difference. What if we do much smaller angle? Do like 10 degrees. Make it three times smaller. How about now? Is there a difference? There is a blue and a red line. Yeah. Oh, you think as it progresses at further times? Um, we could try that. So here I'm doing like 10 time periods, or is it 10? One, two, three, four. I'm doing five time periods. So after five time periods for 10 degrees, still, once you get past like 10 time periods, you probably have to factor in like friction or air resistance anyway. Um, depend, it depends on how you're kind of setting this up. This is like a grandfather clock where you're adding enough energy to offset the friction in the clock, then you can just approximate it as linear pendulum kind of problem. But here still still looks pretty good, right? If the lines are on top of each other, at least for me, I'm not a physicist. I don't care about mathematical, like is the math equation exactly the same as the other? I care about the numbers. Just, is this number close enough to that number? For me, if, if I can't tell the difference on a graph, there's no difference. Um, you, you can come up with your own sort of rule of thumb as you do engineering work, but for me, if I see a graph and the two and I can't tell one line from the other, that's the same line. Even if it's different equations that led to it. Cool. So coming back up here. Why does it keep getting closer as the angle gets smaller? Ten, think about, so, and you can talk about it with a neighbor. These are two pendulums with the same, same exact pendulum length, same exact initial position. The only difference is one, one is a linear approximation where we said, Come in, I'm going to scroll back up to the top where we said acceleration is always that g over l times theta. The other one is the g over l sine theta, which is the more, as far as our free body diagram is concerned, that's the exact in number two. Number one is approximate. So as the angle keeps getting smaller, there's less and less of a difference between one and two. Why? Why not? Why is it? Why does it work for small angle but not for big angle? Think about. It. 
All right, so someone begged me not to do Taylor series expansion, so let's do numerical, like just flat out plot the answer, plot the stuff, then we'll compare it that way. So we're engineer, let's deal with some numbers, right? So we'll say theta goes from Oh my God, I can't spell. Negative one to one. So here I'm going to plot two, two things. One is at theta versus theta. So it's just a slope of one, a line with a slope of one. 
which is the approximation that we made for a linear approximation. The other one is that theta and is sine of theta. Going from negative one to one. And what we can kind of see is that as long as we're below like one half, again, using my rule of thumb is that if I can't see a difference then there is no difference. Below one half, there's no difference. And even up to one, it's, there's a small difference. Like you start to see a difference, but it's not, it's not huge. Kind of like that. So that's why the smaller the angle your pendulum is swinging, the better that linear approximation is. And there, there is no difference at some point. Kind of makes sense. But we could also swing this out to like pi to negative pi. Now you start to see like actual bigger differences that out at pi, the acceleration should be zero, but instead we're estimating that it's three times g over L. Swing it back down. So try this, try an initial angle of 180 degrees, pi, pi radians, what happens? You could think about what would happen and then actually try it and compare linear versus nonlinear. What are the two answers there? So right in here, change this to pi. Theoretically, what happens? Does that make sense? 
Oh, and let me get this back to you. All right, linear solution. If you start at 180, it'll swing down, back around, back up to 180. Energy is conserved, right? So it seems like, all right, make sense? Here's the nonlinear kind of answer. Sorry, once the keyboard short shortcuts quiet down. Good? Bad? What's happening? These graphs can be a little bit weird, but uh, when you first see them, but after some practice. On the left hand side, it's showing you like negative one half to one. But at the top, it's telling you that you multiply all those numbers by 10 to the negative 10 and add 180. So it's 180 plus or minus 0.5 times 10 to the negative 10. So like a nano degree or a fraction of a nano degree. Immeasure, like not measurable, very small. And now when I actually compare it to a graph that swings from 180 to negative 180, is that good? Is that what we would want from a pendulum? What's happening there? Yeah, so linear is just saying that the more, the more, the bigger the angle, the more it's going to swing back through and the faster it's going to go through zero. But for nonlinear, when you have an actual like sine theta comparison, you're taking into account, and again, always helps to go back to free body diagram. So we have, if this thing hangs down at zero, when theta is zero, if its initial angle is zero and it has no initial speed, it just sits there. There's no motion. We have tension going one way, mg going down, and this is all equal to zero. In this other case, we have tension and gravity, but they're all lined up. If everything's, if you happen to like line the pendulum exactly at 180, then you wouldn't expect motion because there's no like moment being applied. So there's no change in angular momentum, no like overall force. The mg and the tension are equal, equal and opposite to each other. You're not going to line it up exactly at zero. They're at, at pi. So let's try this. 99%, like really close to pi, like 179 degrees. So something that slightly off. Like trying to, have you ever held a baseball bat upside down? Or not upside down, but like try to balance it. You, you're never going to get it exactly to sit upright. It's going to be slightly off by a little bit, even if you can't see it. According to linear, there's no difference. But nonlinear, now we start to see like big differences. 
where it slowly starts to swing and then flips, flips down and around. So the time period is really stretching out. Like if you're swinging around in a full circle like that, the time period is really starting to stretch out. That's where you start to see bigger differences is the bigger that angle gets, the more of a difference you see. So main things that, at least like design changes that you can make here are um, what are the initial, like what's the initial angle or the initial velocity of this pendulum? And then what is the, like what's the length? Like what, what kind of pendulum are you considering? How long is that? And, and then the goal is making this quantitative comparison between a numerical and a linear approximation. When would you use one versus the other, something like that. Um, and we'll keep working on this on Wednesday, but uh, actually, let me run through some of these. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So here, like if you're comparing 180 degree kind of motion between two pendulums, there's a lot of differences between position, um, velocity, and acceleration. And there's some stuff that remains the same, like the, the amp relative, the amplitude and position is always going to be the same, whether it's linear or not linear. It's going to swing, whatever the initial conditions are, it's going to swing one way and then come back. Like we're, we don't have any damping or anything that'll change where the amplitude is a function of time. But here in the velocity, we see a much bigger difference in acceleration, way bigger change in that acceleration. So acceleration, at least to me, I, I always see the biggest difference when I'm looking at this graph in that acceleration kind of term. And again, we'll come back to this on Wednesday. So I'll see what kind of questions are popping up. And then we'll start again Wednesday to take another look. This one's the weird one that it's 180. Yeah. But the smaller you make that angle, the more they start to look the same. Uh, yeah. So let's go back to like pi over six. So if you, as you make like a small angle approximation, you actually use more of a small angle, then you start to see some things line up, but some some stuff is a little different. Like the acceleration will have a different amplitude. Yeah. Yeah. 